Hi, in this JetWoo Builder tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add custom quantity selectors to your website. This is gonna give you the ability to add custom icons to pages like your shopping cart or your products grid list. I'm gonna go over a whole bunch of different areas that you can add this new quantity selector. In order to add this functionality to your website, you will need to install an add-on on top of your JetWoo Builder plugin. What you need to do is just head over into this URL right here, and we'll leave a link in the description below. Just jump over into this tab right here called JetWoo Builder. This one right here called Custom Quantity Selectors. Just click this download button. And what it's going to do is just download a zip file and then we can upload that to your website. Once you install the plugin, you're going to see it appear right here. It's called JetWoo Builder Custom Quantity Selector. And as you can see, there's no settings or anything like that right here. This basically is just going to add the functionality to certain widgets inside your JetWoo Builder plugin. So I'm just gonna jump right into a page that's gonna have the products grid widget and the products list widget. And I'm gonna show you this functionality. And as you can see from this page, we're gonna have the products grid at the top and the products list on the bottom. So you can see right here, this is gonna give the user the ability to change the quantity uh, right here within the widget and same thing down here. Now I'm gonna jump into the page and show you how this was all set up. Now I'm on the back end of an Elementor page and you can see right here I have the products grid widget selected and I'm just kind of using a preset and got some settings set up. If your preset isn't showing the quantity right here, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure that underneath this section down here toward the bottom, you have to make sure that the quantity input is active because when you don't have that on, you're not gonna see your quantity selector show up. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have that on. Now, if you scroll down, you're gonna see a whole new panel right here called Quantity Selector. Like I said, if you don't have the plugin installed, it's not gonna show up. This is where all the settings are gonna show up is right within this panel. So the very first thing you need to do is, of course, click the on button. By default, it's no. And this is what the original Quantity Selector looks like. So if you just go ahead, turn that on, so the very first thing is you need to figure out how you want the position. So by default, it's horizontal. And if I switch this over to vertical, of course, it's gonna stack where you're gonna have the plus and the minus right here. You can do the start, which is gonna have it before the quantity. And of course, is gonna be behind it. So what's nice about this add-on is they give you a lot of flexibility for how you can position these icons. So you're not really limited to just within input feel like it originally had. I kind of like the horizontal. Let's just kind of go with that for now. And if you click right here, this is where, of course, your increase and your decrease icons are going to appear. So you're just going to click this. By default, you can always go ahead and just use something from the library right here. This is just like the font awesome library. So you can go and just kind of type in something like plus, and you can see that there's a plus icon. You can do it where it's like a circle, you know, whatever you want. But what's nice about this also is you have this button right here. So if you have your own SVG image, you can go ahead and just upload one. So once you choose your icons, now I'm gonna show you some of the styling options they give you. So if you go underneath style, you're gonna see on the bottom, there's a new thing called quantity selector. They give you a few options within here. So you can see, you can change the size of these icons and the color. So let's go ahead and just change the color to something that fits the website a little bit better. So as you can see, the black works good and I have this hover into this lighter color. So that looks good right there. And so they give you the ability to change the icon sizes. But as you can see, if you start to increase it too much, it can really interfere with the input right here. So let's say we wanna have it this size right there. What you can do is if you need to have this quantity input a little bit bigger, you can go underneath here and start to change the width of that and you can see it'll give the ability to have double digits, triple digits, whatever it may be. In this case, I think something like that could be good if you want the icons to be that big. We just go ahead, hit update, and let's see how this looks on the front end of the website. Here we are on the front end of the website. Now let's go ahead and just make sure that these buttons are working correctly. So if I go ahead and add and subtract, you can see the numbers are working correctly. If you go to double digits, it should be looking correctly. Even if you have a triple digit, made enough room in here for the input to work correctly. So let's just go ahead, change this to like a three, and let's just click add to cart. And up here, you're gonna see we have two items and you can see it automatically updated it to three. 
So now we have five items total. Now I did run into one little issue and that is if you do have this option on right here where it says make a product item clickable, you might run into some issues where if you click the plus or minus selectors, what it does is it automatically redirects to this page. And that's because when you have this setting on, it basically, just like it says, it makes this whole entire item clickable. If you have issues, just make sure that you have this off. And now let's jump down into the products list widget and you're gonna notice it's basically the same thing as the products grid. So once you go into it, you're gonna see this new quantity selector active. And then same thing, if you go under the style, you're gonna have the same exact settings. So this is where you can go ahead and change you know, the size of the icons here. And you know, just like the products grid, it's in the same exact location. We can go ahead, hit update, and let's just make sure that's working correctly in the products list. And so if I scroll down here, you can go ahead and make sure that this works correctly too. So let's just make sure that that all is gonna load correctly. So we have three items we're gonna add. You can click that, that should update to eight. And as you can see, it updated to eight and we have six of the shorts total. Now I'm gonna show you, if you go into a products page, how you can add the quantity selectors on the product page itself. And as you can see on this template I have installed from CargoBlock, if you go underneath edit with Elementor, you can see right here, this is just using the JetWoo single template. So once you click into that, you're gonna be able to make the adjustments and add the quantity selectors here. So once you jump into that page, you're gonna notice that the widget that it's attached to is called the single add to cart. Now, if you are on an archive page, it would be very similar. You could just type in like add to cart and you have the same functionality. You have an archive add to cart. But in this case, we're doing a single add to cart widget. Underneath here, you're gonna see it's the same exact setting. Um, the only setting you do have underneath content is the quantity selector. And so this is where you can go ahead and change the size of the buttons and everything. And if you jump over into the styling, you're gonna see the quantity selectors right in here. So let's make those a little bit smaller. And I think that should be fine. We got a hover. Let's change that hover to like our blue so it matches. So everything looks good here. And then all of the other settings are, you know, within the styling tab here. So if you have your different buttons, you can change them all here. So if you want to add to cart, maybe a little bit more narrow, you can do something like that. You know, this is just standard Elementor settings right here. So let's go ahead and hit update and just make sure that these are working as well. And here we are on a single product page. So if we just go ahead and you can select some options here, just like all the other ones, you can add and subtract here. Let's just do a test. I always like to make sure these things work. So if you click add to cart with two, that should go up to 10. Once that refreshes, so you can see it updates automatically. And now let's go ahead and jump into the cart page and show you the same exact thing. And in my opinion, this is probably the most important page to have your quantity selector is on the cart page. And just like the other one, if you go into here, you can see the cart is just using the standard uh, JetWoo cart template. And once we jump into that, you're gonna see that we have a cart table widget already installed. Just like all the other ones, you just go down into your quantity selector and same options here. What I do recommend is, I do like the way that this input field is pretty large. I recommend keeping this pretty large. Since you're in a table format, this should scale pretty easily because you want to have a little more horizontal space. And let's go ahead and just change the styling here to kind of match the rest of the website. So we just go underneath here, change the color to black, the hover into like this primary. And just like all the other ones, we can just go ahead and test to make sure that when you click this button, it will update automatically. Here we are on a shopping cart page and let's just change a bunch of these variables to kind of make sure that everything's working correctly. So once you do that, the user can go ahead and click update cart and it should update automatically. Once you click that, it says cart updated and those variables did stick. If you jump over into the actions controls, you can click this button where it says update cart automatically. And what that's gonna do is when the user does click on one of these controls right here, it will automatically update the cart rather than having that button down here. So let's go ahead, hit update and make sure that that does work correctly. And here we are at the shopping cart page and you probably did notice that the button is now missing. So let's go ahead and start messing with these values. And what I like to do is make sure that this little widget up here is changing as well. 
So this is like your mini cart. I want to make sure that if I click these buttons, that will update correctly. So if we go and change that just to a one, you're going to see it updates automatically and that will update to a 10. And there you can see the icon updated to a 10. And that's it for this tutorial on how to add the custom quantity selector to your JetWoo Builder website. Thank you for watching.